Live. Starring Cliff Arquette and Mel Blanc. Written and produced by Robert L. Red. Point Sublime. In just a moment, we'll bring you the human story of a fellow named Ben Willis. I'd like you to meet your John Hancock agent. Friends, I think you'll agree that crossing certain busy streets could prove mighty risky if city planners hadn't provided those safety islands in the middle where you can sort of get your bearings, and if necessary, wait till the light turns green again. And you know, there's another kind of safety island that you can plan for your family if they should ever have to get along without your support and cross over to a new way of life. And it costs less than you may think to provide your family with just such a fund through life insurance. Now, your friendly John Hancock agent will gladly show you how a personal security plan like this can best be fitted to your present earnings. And behind him, remember, stands the John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company's 85 years of experience in helping millions of Americans safeguard the future of those they love. So... Let your John Hancock agent supply complete details. Now for the human story of a fellow named Ben Willis. Ben has been working hard all morning in his store, sweeping out, dusting, and rearranging his stock. But he has kept his eye on the clock, for he plans to meet the late morning train. A moment ago, August Moon, his store helper, arrived, and right now, Ben is handing Mooney the broom. Mooney, doggone you, you're late again. Now take this broom and do some work. I want you to sweep under the bread counter. Now, all I ever do around here is work. Now, slave. <laughs> well, get to work, sweep. Hey, I'm going to start wearing a harness around here. A harness? What for? Well, if I have to be able to work like a horse, I want to look like a horse. <laughs> now, John, sometimes I think you got a pear-shaped brain, Mooney. That did it. it, 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 it that did it. What did what? Hey, here's your old broom. You insulted me. I quit. No, oh, now, Mooney, I, I'm sorry. You just can't quit. You know, you got to stay truly. Well... If I stay, I'd want to see certain things my way around here. Well, just name it. You can have it. I can? Oh, goody. In a minute, now I can run my fingers through the every, 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 rice bin without asking permission. <laughs> yeah, I'll stay. Oh, good. Gosh, I got to watch the time. I got to meet the 1118 train. Package coming by freight. Hey, uh, what kind of package, Mr. Wilson? A great big banner I ordered from a San Francisco decoration company. I'm going to stretch it clean across Main Street, right in front of my store here. Yeah, it will it have words on it? Sure. It's going to be my one and only piece of campaigning for election to be county commissioner. My banner's going to read, Will it be will it or will it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, wait till that old windbag Hattie Hurst burns. Wait till she sees this. <laughs> yeah, say, Mr. Will, you remember the moron stories that used to go around? Well, huh? Don't tell me they're back again. Oh, sure, hotter than ever. And I got me a new one. I'm not interested, sweep. Yeah, okay, but, but don't rush me. Well, uh, uh, this moron, he took cream and sugar to the theater with him one night. No, I don't care. I want you to take the broom. Why'd the moron take cream and sugar to the theater with him? Well, he, he heard there was going to be a cereal. <laughs> <laughs> It's not funny. Hey, Mooney, look outside. What? Here comes that young guy that moved his trailer into the meadows above the Palisades last week. Oh, yeah, I know. Mike Pagano. Hey, he's tough. Oh, he is not. I kind of got acquainted with him yesterday. Mike's all right. He's sick. Is that husky guy sick? Oh, yeah, don't let him kid you. Hey, haven't you looked at the muscles on that guy? Yeah, you're going to have muscles and still be sick, Mooney. No. Well... Hey, 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 look, he's got that uh, stuffy blonde dame with him. Yeah. Oh, I think he's daffy about it. Yeah, Teresa, what's her name? Well, yeah, you ought to know her name. She, she registered at our motel captain's here. No, Teresa Daly or something. Yeah, I sure like a cute little girlfriend. Yeah, little, yeah, little, yeah, little Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I wish Mike could get that wise, that blonde, that wise blonde who 
You know what I mean, don't you, Mary? Yeah, yeah, no, I know. She, I, I don't care too much for her myself. You well, know, I wish the, she and her girlfriend would check out and leave. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and little Louise is wonderful. I remember that day they arrived on the bus. I carried her suitcase into the motel for her. And little, little Louise looked at me, and she smiled. Yeah, I know, Mooney. You told me a thousand times. Yeah, and she smiled up at me, and she said, If the, if the, if the, if the, if the, if thank you. <laughs> Just like that, she said it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Quiet, Mooney. Here comes Mike and Miss Daly. Morning, Mr. Willett. Well, what's cooking today? Well, how are you, Mike? Morning, Miss Daly. How are you, Mr. Willett? Oh, swell day, huh? Nice and warm for January. Oh, yeah, nice, Mike. Hey, it sure is a great day for the race. What race, Mooney? Yeah, the human race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I caught you on that one again. Mooney, will you get out of here? Yeah, yeah I will. I'll get out. Hey, you know something, Mr. Willett? Teresa and I have just been for a long walk down on the beach, haven't we, honey? Yes, but why should that interest Mr. Willis? Well, he's kind of a friend of mine, and I thought he'd like to know that you and me are getting along so good together now. Yeah, we're doing okay, Mr. Willis. Oh, gosh, five after 11, I gotta get started up the depot here. Hey, you ain't leaving town. Oh, no, no, just meet the train. I'm expecting a package. Well, I'm going, Mike, over to my motel cabin. Yeah? Well, well, look, Teresa, how about me coming back in, uh, well, about in an hour, huh? And we'll have lunch somewhere. I think I'll skip lunch with you today, Mike. Oh? Well, then I'll, I'll see you later this afternoon, then, huh? Well, I'll, um, uh, I'll be busy the rest of the day. I'll see you tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow? And don't forget our talk down on the beach, Mike. You mean about getting a job? Yes, getting a job in this town this afternoon. Yeah, 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 well, well sure, sure, Teresa. I guess you may be see her tomorrow, Mike. Yeah. Oh, no kidding, Mr. Willett. She, she's wonderful. Is she? Well, look, don't you think so? Frankly, no. Ah, oh, now you, you don't know her. Yeah, that's right, but she's laughing at you, Mike. Laughing at you? You came to our town six days ago. Oh, I know, I know. And I met Teresa Daly right here in your store. It's all been sudden and... Oh, she's a swell girl. Oh, Mike. Yeah? I don't know you very well. That's right. The other day you told me quite a few things. Okay, okay, so I talked. You think you've fallen in love with that girl? Maybe I have. You might fall out. What? Yeah, before you're hurt. I bet she thinks you're bluffing about your health. Well, Teresa thinks I look pretty doggone healthy. Yeah, she would. No, no, honest, honest. I can understand the way she feels. I, I told her I loved her, but she wants to know how I live. I mean, what I can do to make a living. She says I should get a job now. Mike. Yeah? You told me you've been roaming around the country in your trailer for the last two years. Yeah, yeah, since the war, since I left the Higgins Boat Works down in New Orleans. You told me that three weeks ago you made up your mind to sell your car and trailer, sign up for a hitch with the Navy. Okay, okay, I didn't pass the physical. Well, don't be so defensive, Mike. Well, I can't just lay around here forever doing nothing. Well, the heart condition doesn't heal up over now. Yeah, but I feel great now. You just don't like Teresa. Yeah, that's right. Honest, Mike, you're too good a guy for a self-centered, egotistical girl like her. She don't want to bring you unhappiness. Maybe you better keep your opinions to yourself. Because you know I'm right. No, because I don't want to hear them. I'm going to find a job around here in town, on a farm, anywhere. I can't stand having dames and everybody wondering why a husky-looking guy like me don't go to work and earn a living. It, it makes me nervous. Uh, look, this is a little town, but there's a wonderful doctor here. Yeah? So what about it? Go see him. Have him check your heart. See how it's come along. Maybe you won't have to lay around much longer before you can take a job without harming yourself. But don't let a girl throw you off the track. Uh, what's his name? Doc Lockhart. Just go down Main Street to Avenue D, turn right two blocks. It's a big old white house with the Lombardi poplars in front. Uh, tell Doc your friend of mine. Okay. Okay, I'll go see him. I'll go eat right now, even. But you get this, Mr. Willett. Teresa Daly ain't the kind of a woman you think she is. She's... Uh, well, she's okay. Yes, yeah, she's okay. Oh, dear. Mike, with his eyes wide open, walking right into trouble. He, he's in love. What? Mooney, what have you been doing back at that counter? Well, I've been having fun. I've been uh, running my fingers through the rice bin. <laughs> now, look, I thought I asked you to sweep under the bread counter. Well, dear, don't rush me. Give me time. 
Hey, you, you don't like that girl Mike's in love with, do you? Huh? Nah, Mike isn't in love with her. He just thinks he is. Yeah. I, I sure like a girlfriend here, yeah. little, little Louise. Well, I wish you'd stop talking about little Louise all the time. Uh, I'll never forget the day she arrived, and I offered to carry her bag. Yeah. And she looked up at me with her big, big, big blue eyes. She smiled, and then she said, Is it, is it, is it, is it? Yes, yes, I know. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Billy, my boy. Howie and Evie, how are you, baby? Look what I brought then. Seven more cans of condensed milk. Here. Oh, wonderful, Evie. You know there ought to be more people as conscientious as you, Evie. Three of those cans I gave Evelyn to bring over. Well, good for you, Howie. I'll put them in our local canned milk pool. County boys will pick them all up tomorrow, and our contribution will be on board the Goodwill milk ship in no time. That's fine, Bennett. Yeah, that ship can carry 1,400 tons of condensed milk. Really? Sure. And it's going to kids in Europe, Greece, and France, and Italy. Milk. Life-saving stuff. And our little old community of points of blind. A teeny part of America is helping out. Ah, you swell people, baby. Oh, stop it, Jimmy. Come on, Evelyn. We have to go. Now, now wait. I want a big rush. Can't you see who's coming down the street? Hattie Hirsch. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Let's get out of here fast, Evelyn. I can't stand now, her. Now, wait, Howard. Hattie isn't so bad. Oh, laws. Here she comes. The old wind sock. <laughs> Look at her tail feathers flying in the breeze. Well, well. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Morning, Hattie. Nice morning. Warm, isn't it? I'm not so hot. You're telling me. <laughs> but I suppose I have to agree with my prospective voters. Yes, it is warm, Evelyn. Phew. Oh, say, you Hattie. Yes. You look like you just came from the beauty parlor. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Was it closed? <laughs> you, you horrible man. <laughs> Patty, every year just turned in seven more cans of condensed milk for Europe. So? As I recollect, you haven't turned in any. What's more, I don't intend to. Why not? Oh, it's such a bother. Anyway, my time is being devoted to more important matters here at home. Such as trying to get yourself elected county commissioner. Oh, you never mind. Anyway, I say let Europe take care of herself. Why should we bother to send milk there? Well, I guess I don't exactly know how to answer that one, Hattie. But no, I imagine you don't. Except that a hungry little kid is a pretty hungry little kid. Whether his dad and mother are Americans or French, fruits or Eskimos. Sometimes my food doesn't taste very good to me, Hattie. When I stop to think about some hungry little five-year-old girl or boy whose stomach actually aches for the want of food. Hey, it's 14 minutes after 11, Mr. Willow. It's okay, Hattie. Don't turn anything in for the milk ship. There's always somebody else in this country ready and willing to do twice a share. What'd you stop by for? Well, yeah, I, I'm telling I, you, Mr. Willow, we, we, we gotta be up at the depot in four minutes to meet the train. Uh, let's go. Is somebody arriving, Benny? A package from San Francisco. Oh, well, you'll see it, Hattie. A great big banner. What kind of banner? It's gonna stretch across Main Street and it'll say in big letters, Will it be will it or will it? <laughs> you can't stretch banners across our street. Oh, is that so? There must be an ordinance against messing up our public street. Yeah, oh, talk, talk, talk. Come on, Evelyn, let's get out of here. I am going right over to the city hall. Oh, yeah, what for, Hattie? We'll check the city hall bylaws. Oh, I'll find an ordinance that'll stop you then, will it? Hate to see you waste your time, Hattie. Oh, I'll show you a thing or two. Oh, say, Hattie, you sure are dressed up today. You look like something that stepped right out of a magazine. Oh, really? Harper's Bazaar? No, Popular Mechanics. <laughs> oh, Ben, I hope she can't keep you from putting up your banner. Oh, I don't know. Hey, hey, the train. Yeah, huh? I've been telling you, telling you. Now, 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 let's go. Uh, please, Mooney, you stay and run store for me. If I stay, I quit. That's what I say. Come on, Mooney, let's go to the depot. Uh, Howie, Abby, run store for me. Yeah, but Benny... Uh, we'll stay, Ben. Thanks, I'll give you my banner. I'll show that Harry Hirsch. Come on, Mooney. Yeah, nah, I'm right with you, Dad. <laughs> Just a few moments, we'll bring you 
part two of Floyd Sublime. But first, here's... Time to take over, please, Webster. Thank you, Art. So you know, friends, how Americans like to feel independent. Well, among other things, that means knowing that your family will be protected against hardship should your support be someday withdrawn. And knowing that helps you understand why so many millions of Americans are safeguarding their loved ones through life insurance. Now, one out of every nine American policyholders has placed his life insurance with the John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company. And such faith in John Hancock, with its 85 years of experience, is your assurance of securing the right protection for those you love, if that emergency should ever arise. You know, it's easier than you may think to manage a personal security plan and still fit it into your regular budget. So let your John Hancock agent help you now to plan a safer tomorrow for those who depend on you. It was a tie. The train and Ben Willett's delivery truck arrived at the depot at the same time. The baggage man put off a big bundle, a passenger got off, and now the train is leaving. Yeah, pretty big package, huh, Mooney? Grab hold the other end there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is your advertising banner, huh? Yeah, and little Hattie Hurst burned when she... Hey, what? This girl coming here. Oh, gee, she's awful pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I wish I was down at the store. I'd be able to run my fingers through the rice bin again. <laughs> oh, stop it. Gee, she sure looks awful warm in that heavy tweed top coat she's wearing. Hey, she's got something hanging on her be a be a button on her coat. Hey, look at it. It looks like a tag. Oh, will you keep quiet, Mooney? <laughs> sure's a cute little red tam she's got on. Hey, she's looking for somebody. Yeah, I bet she got off at the wrong station. Oh, well, wait a minute. Uh, hello? I, I say, are you looking for somebody? Are you? Oh, but no. You aren't my Uncle Andrew, are you? Well, not exactly. My name's Ben Willett. Hey, my name's August Moon. Hey, but, but you can call me Mooney. Yeah, just keep back, Mooney. Yes, uh, was your Uncle Andrew supposed to meet you here? Why, he was supposed to meet me day after tomorrow, but I'm ahead of my schedule. Well, if I can help you in any way. Well, I'll just take an omnibus down to the village and telephone my uncle from there. Well, bus doesn't need the train anymore. Well, you can ride in our delivery truck. My grandmama said I wasn't to pick up with strangers, especially if they were men. <laughs> well, uh, say, where are you from? Aberfeldy. Aberfeldy? Where's that? It's in Scotland, sir, on the River Tay. You mean you came here to Point Sublime all the way from Scotland? Aye. And is there anything wrong with it? Well, no, of course not, but it's a long way. I mean... Oh, it's warm here. I think I'll take off my jacket. Do you see my little tag I'm wearing? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> you think I'm daft wearing a tag like a wee child? Well, we kind of wondered what it was. <laughs> it's the name and destination. Oh? Grandma tied it on me before I left Aberfeldy, and she made me promise I wouldn't take it off till I reached Uncle Andrew and Aunt Madge. I'm a big girl for wearing tags, you know. Andrew and Madge? You don't mean the Magruders? You know them? Andrew Magruder's my uncle, my father's brother. Why, of course. I know old Andy Magruder. He's got a small ranch about nine miles out of town. Say, what's your name? Laura. Laura Magruder. Gee, that's a pretty name. I, I like that name. I'm Julia. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Well, uh, come on, Laura. We'll go down to my store and we'll telephone your Uncle Andrew so he can come and get you. Oh, someday I'll be able to pay him for your goodness. This is my hamper here. Yeah, Mooney. Yeah, yeah, I'll carry your hamper here to her satchel. Well, thank you, Mom. Oh, sure, but uh, you just don't look at me and smile. I can't take it. <laughs> well, I'll carry this big bundle I got here, my banner. Lead the way, Mooney. Open the car door for Laura. Yeah, you said it. Hey, gosh, Mr. Willis, hey, did, did you hear what you said when I offered to carry your hamper? Yes, yes, open the door for Laura. Yes, yes, sure. There, there, there Laura. Thank you. <laughs> we'll get right down to the store, and Laura can call her uncle and aunt. Gosh, she looked right up at me, and she said, uh, if the, if the, if the, if the, if Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> now, Ben, do be careful up there on that ladder. I'm almost done up here, Abby. How's it over on your side of the street, Howie? 
Okay. We're coming down. Look out, Evie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, how's my banner look floating gallantly across old Main Street, Evie? Oh, wonderful day, and I'm so proud. Yeah, wait till Hattie sees it. <laughs> Well, I just hope Patty won't find a legal way to make you take it down. Well, don't worry, she won't. Hey, look at Mike Pagana coming down the street here. What's he looking so sour about? You search me. Hey, Mike. Huh? Yeah, look at my banner swinging up there in the breeze. How do you like that, huh? Oh, that's, uh, okay, Mr. Bullock. Yeah, that's swell. What's wrong, Mike? Oh, I got bum news. Bad news? Yep. I was over to your doc's office, Mr. Willett. Say, hey, he's okay. Well, what do you say about you going to work now? No go. Oh. Yeah, I got to watch my ticket for about a month longer. What did Dr. Lockhart say about your heart condition, Mike? Gosh, Miss Hanover, my trouble has sort of got to be everybody's business around town, hasn't it? Oh. We don't mean to pry. Oh, I didn't mean it that way, honest. It, it just sounded like I... Well, like I'd beefing or try to cop a plea. We are just interested. Well, Dr. Lockhart said... He's got to take another check on my heart in about ten days. Oh? Maybe I ain't doing so good. He said I couldn't go to work now. I sure hate to tell that to Teresa. She'll think I'm lazy, just stalling about getting a job. Oh, let her think whatever she wants. Oh, 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 excuse me, it's Laura. Yeah, yeah, Laura. Did you get your call through to your uncle? I just talked to my Aunt Mad. She was more than a week of price to hear from me so early. Are they driving to the town to get you, Laura? In about two hours, she said. Uh... How much do I owe for the telephone, Mr. Willis? Oh, about $10,000. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What, Mike? Oh, Teresa's coming out of her motel cabin. I hate to face her. Oh, excuse me, Laura. Mike, have you met Mrs. Miss Magruder? Laura, this is Mike Pagano. He's uh, visiting here in our town. Well, how do you do, Mr. Pagano? Yeah, how are you? Glad to meet you. Uh, 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 Teresa? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. The congregation gathers for. Hey, how do you like my new banner up there, Miss Daly? Very nice. Where have you been, Mike? Did you look for a job? Well, uh, no. But I thought you were... Yeah, look, Teresa, I... Uh, I, I anyhow, I, I come, Laura. Let's go inside the store. We'll, we'll see what Mooney's doing in there. Yeah, sure. He's an odd one, Mooney. <laughs> you like Mooney, honey. Mike, why didn't you get a job like you said you would? Now, look, Teresa, look, I, I went to see a doc. I never saw a husky man pamper himself so. Oh, I knew you'd say that. Oh, look, honey, can't we go somewhere and talk? Who was that girl in the funny-looking suit you were talking to when I came out? I don't know. I don't know. Lara, somebody. I wasn't talking to her. You were. I saw you. If you'd lie about that, you'd lie about anything. I'm not lying. Mike I can't... Pagano. I thought I'd play along with you just to see how far you'd go with your stall about keeping out of work. Now, listen here, sister. Oh, not that it ever really mattered to me. Why, you... No woman can stand a lazy man. A man's supposed to be a breadwinner. He's supposed to support a woman. He's too lazy to support yourself. How do you mean? Borrow? Mooch? Why, are you... Go ahead, hit me. No. You wanted to. How could I help it? Well, that's sad, Mooch. Oh, Teresa, look, baby, look. I could bust right out crying now. I'm so ashamed, honestly. I thought I might help make a man out of you, but... Well, where are you going, honey? Hey, wait a minute. Come back I here. I wish you wouldn't follow me. Mr. Willis. Please make up my motel bill and send it right over to our cabin. Louise and I are leaving. We are? Good. I mean... Uh, now, you... please, please, Teresa. Get away from me, you... Oh, wait, please, sir. listen. He has a bad disposition. Yeah, you said it. Uh, hey, Mike, come back here. I'm going on down to the meadows to my trailer. Come back here, Mike. Oh, nuts. I lost my temper. She wouldn't believe me, and now she's going. Is she a girl, Addy? What? Was that your lady friend? Yeah, it was. Is right. I can't help it if I fell for the day. Oh, fuck up, man. Six months ago, I lost my lady. But in a different way. Yeah? Uh, what do you mean, Laura? Bruce McKendricks was his name. And as fine a man as God ever gave breath to. How'd you lose him, Laura? We have perpetual draft in Scotland. Uh, perpetual draft? Every young man, when he comes of age, has two years of military training. It's like our proposed universal military training here, Betty. Oh, yeah. Well, go on, Laura. He was in the Royal Air Force, my laddie was, and had but five more months to go. Some of the equipment our boys have to train with is so terrible old. The plane Bruce was flying that day simply burst into flames and fell. We were going to be married last Christmas. Now... 
My bliss is gone forever. I'm so sorry, Laura. Well, then father shipped me off here to America to get me away. Yeah. I was just thinking of her boyfriend. And me. Me, I can't even get in our peacetime Navy here. You wanted to join the Navy lately? Oh, sure. Well, then what do you mean? Oh, you leave know? it alone, Willett. It's my sad story. It's me. Don't try to fix it up pretty for me. Dames just don't understand. Well, I... Think... So you've lost your girl, Laddie. Well, what's to do about it? Nothing. There's not for me to do about mine. Say, could you and I be talking together this afternoon before my uncle comes for me? <laughs> do you think I'm a brazen little hussy for asking you? Talk? I saw a green park across the street if you care to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. I'd like to talk to somebody, I guess. Say, uh, what's your name again? Laura McGregor. Yeah. Come on, Laura. Let's go cry on each other's shoulders, huh? Anything, anything. You know, there's a little puppy out of Yeah, watch your step, Laura. Now... There's a girl who understands a fellow like Mike Pagano. Maybe straighten him out. Oh, she's lonesome. Terribly lonesome. Did, did I hear somebody call me just now? You did not, and you know it. Where you been, Mooney? In the back storeroom. room. Well, did, did you do your work? Well, then, Willis, I see you put your fool sign up across the street. That I did, Hattie. Well, you can just take it down. Says you. It took me a while over at the city hall, but I found an ordinance prohibiting any kind of advertising banners across our street. I don't believe it. I've been mayor for 17 years, and no such ordinance was ever passed. It was passed before you were mayor. Oops. Back in 1923. But folks have forgot about it now. Then, Willis, I demand you remove that gaudy piece. Of Valley Now, Hattie, be reasonable. I want the laws upheld. Take it down. I demand. No, well, doggone it. I'm sorry, Billy. Yeah, me too. I've had some terrible disappointments in my life, but this one is the worst. In fact, this is the worst since when I was a boy of 12. What happened then? I sneaked under a tent to see a circus. Turned out to be a revival meeting. <laughs> Take that banner down. No. No, I won't do it. I just thought of something. What? The law has been forgotten about for years. Now, look, Hattie, you haven't been a good enough citizen to bother to contribute to the milk ship for you. So you can't bulldoze me. Oh, I wish you'd hush up about that milk hush ship. Hush up? Why, I'm going to get me a loudspeaker and drive up and down the streets and tell the voters what kind of an American you are. Oh, oh no. Do I leave my banner up, Hattie Hirsch? Oh. Oh, 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 yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, leave it up. Leave it up anything, but keep your big mouth shut. Well, okay. And you better turn in a few cans of condensed milk before I lose my temper again. Yes, I will. Yeah. I, I, I will. You bet yes. you will. Yeah, I see you have me. I yeah. see you have me. And do you know what I think of you, Ben Willis? <laughs> no, what, Hattie? You're nothing but a... But a, but a what, Hattie? A nasty man! Oh. <laughs> Ben, you were wonderful. You sure knew how to handle Hattie Hurst, Benny. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. But she isn't that little Scotch lassie cute, Mr. Willis. Oh, Laura Magruder's great. I'm glad you come here. Yeah. And we, when I offered to carry your satchel, she, she looked up at me and smiled and said, It's me, it's me, it's me. Yes, yes, thank you. No, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, gee, every baby. Well, <laughs> what is it, Ben? <laughs> Ain't I the one? <laughs> <laughs> local John Hancock agent, you'll probably be surprised to learn how little it will cost to protect your loved ones from hardship if your support should be withdrawn. Remember, too, that your friendly John Hancock agent is always ready to serve you, to help you make sure that you have enough life insurance to fit your present needs. And behind him stands the John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company's 85 years of experience in helping millions of American families achieve security. So, at your earliest opportunity, talk things over with your John Hancock agent. Points 
Sublime is written and produced by Robert L. Redd and stars Cliff Arquette and Mel Blanc with the original cast including Jay Morgan, Earl Ross, Verna Felton, Wally Mayer, Jane Webb, Lorraine Tuttle, and Vincent Palatier. Music is by Charles Dan. This is Art Gilmore saying next Monday night at this same time, tune in again for Point Sublime. The preceding program was heard earlier and transcribed for this more convenient release at this time.